Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today is a bright sunny day on the last day of September 2022. So I'm actually really behind in editing these videos and been filming a lot of videos these days. Yeah, okay, so here I am walking around little Europe area in Montreal. And the trees are beginning to change color now. And here's one mural of Dali. It's really cool. And here I am outside a cafe. It's called White Korean Cafe. Looks very quiet inside. And the interior is actually pretty minimalistic. With a map of a world map on the wall. Pretty simple interior design. And here I'm sitting by the window. And I ordered a little brownie with a cup of latte. Okay, so after enjoying my snacks, I'm ready to sketch the view outside the window. Yeah, this row of uh, residential houses. Very, very colorful. And um, because I'm right-handed, I like to start drawing from the left most of the time. And when drawing buildings, I like to start with a rooftop area around the upper left area. So I just finished that with the two attic um, windows sticking out from the roof and the little balcony. And gradually building the lines towards the right side. So making drawing very simple by just focusing on uh, one shape at a time and fill the inside of the shape with the smaller shape. And I love drawing these little um, attic windows. So these are kind of like little bird houses. And adding the balcony is aligning with the one on the left, pretty much. And connecting the bottom of the, of the uh, balcony with these three little evergreen trees in cone shapes. And keep building on the shape of the next house, looking a little bit different connecting this uh, street sign and some more. So this row of houses is divided into several sections and I just drew the tabs underneath the eave and keep building the rooftop area. So I saw two Shiba Inu dogs, one of my favorite dog breeds and keep continuing drawing the contour outline of the rooftop on the right side and underneath is, um, I see some more medium shapes, a lot of trapezoids and uh, triangles. And it's starting to add the doors, starting with the left and a lamp on the very left of the scenery and some uh, tree branches and twigs sticking out from the foliages, starting to draw the top contour outline of the foliages and using squiggly lines to show the textures of trees using some dense black lines to show the, the tree trunks. We're also adding point of interest with solid black ink shapes. Starting to add these doors or windows on the second floor. And I always like to color in the, uh, the windows with solid black ink because it just gives more density and sense of depth for these houses. So I never feel that drawing buildings is that challenging because I always like to start with the general outlines and then filling in uh, the inner details for the windows and balconies. And pretty much all houses are very similar. They're just designed in different uh, shapes. So I focus a lot on shapes and not worry so much about uh, the exact accuracy. So sometimes if I'm drawing, for example, a window a little bit too big or too small, I don't stress about it. Yeah, because it's still going to look like a house anyway. It's still going to make sense. Uh, I'm not like an architect or a designer. So yeah, so our drawings doesn't need to be technically accurate, but still it needs to show your, um, your interaction with what you see and a bit of your personality. It doesn't have to be like technically accurate, like an architect design paper. And starting to draw the contour outlines and the wheels for these cars parked on the roadside. So when drawing cars, let's just start with a simple outline and then filling in the details for the windows. 
And for the windows of the cars, I like to color in with solid black ink too, just so these cars are actually, it has an interior, not just shapes. Same for this car as well. Yeah, so now I'm starting to add this lamp and the street sign below it in relationship to the house behind. It's right along the division line there and adding some more fun attic shapes. So the triangles and the little prisms sticking out and the little windows using very quick lines to show the texture of the roofs. Keep adding more window frames. Yes, yeah, so and when drawing like something like seemingly complicated like architecture, I just try to relax and I don't worry too much about proportions. If I draw a little bit too big or too small, you know, for the windows or the doors or any other, other things, I think it's okay to add a kind of personality and uh, playful nature to my drawing. And now I'm just adding these bushes underneath these two windows. So it's all about connection. And it also takes a lot of uh, patience to keep going because uh, when we're drawing buildings, there are actually a lot of repetitions. A lot of the windows and doors and balconies, uh, rooftop structures, they have very similar shapes or very much the same shapes. So you have to keep going and not uh, you know, get bored. It's actually fun and satisfying to keep, to keep building uh, structures and adding uh, one thing after another. It's kind of like building with Lego blocks. Drawing sometimes can feel like a game. And um, some people say that my drawing style is like realism, but um, when I'm drawing, I'm not thinking about what style I am pushing for. I just draw, I just make lines and putting those juicy paints on the paper. I don't think about, I don't think too much about what I'm really doing. I just purely enjoy the, the drawing process, the emergence of lines and colors on paper. Yeah, so let's just keep drawing some more shapes for the attic area of this house pretty close to me. Some nice little curvy lines for the rooftop structure, the wavy lines, and another street sign there. And the railing surrounding the outside of this house, staircase, pretty much like a ladder. A lot of Montreal houses are like this. They have this uh, staircase like a ladder uh, leading to the second floor. So when you're drawing and painting, just draw and paint and don't think too much about what style that you're, uh, you're going to end up with and don't try to imitate uh, someone else's styles or techniques. Um, eventually, we'll, we'll have our own unique styles because we all came from uh, different um, cognitive experiences in life. So the way that we draw and paint it should be different from others. And now I am using an almost blind contour approach to draw the outlines of the foliages on the right side of the uh, scenery and starting to draw the prism shapes of these buildings in the distance. Yeah, so I need a bit of sense of depth over here, drawing these buildings smaller because they're in the distance and also less detailed. And adding this man walking across the, uh, the alley. Yeah, adding these two lines that gives a sense of depth to the street. And now I'm just adding the, uh, the stalks of tall grass in the foreground right outside the window. It also helps to establish a sense of depth over here with some foreground elements. And switching to a brown fine liner pen to draw the foliages in the back of the building. That's it. And here is how I'm sitting by the window on a bench. Here's my gooseneck tripod attached to my sketchbook and filming with my phone. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So I just wetted the sky area with clear water. So it's very easy for the watercolors to blend 
nice and soft. Just adding a bit of cerulean blue here. For the bottom, I'm putting on a little bit of lime green because the bottom of the sky, if we look carefully, it's a bit of a, like a turquoise color. And for the street, I'm putting on a bit of a yellow ochre, diluted to show the bright, glorious sunshine. And for these trees, I'm uh, using lime green mixed with a bit of orange and cadmium yellow. Yeah, even more orange for this second layer, wet into wet, like a golden green color. So this kind of yellow green or golden green color on foliages um, is very different from the color of fresh spring leaves. Okay, so for fresh spring leaves, I would use uh, lemon yellow mixed with lime green. But in this case, for fall or for autumn, I'm mixing in orange into the lime green. And putting on this uh, uh, sunshine on the exterior of these houses. First layer for the trees, a lime green mixing with a tiny bit of yellow ochre, a bit of orange for those bushes in front of the houses. And using my own recipe of trio colors, blue, green, and magenta to get my own gray for the shadows, which is pretty interesting. Shadow really helps to um, um, show contrast on a sunny day. And now having fun putting on these vibrant colors uh, on the exterior of these houses, the reds, the greens, fresh colors straight from the palette. Painting is like so much fun because we don't really have to uh, color inside uh, those shapes, especially if they're really small. Don't stress about uh, putting color exactly inside those little shapes. I'm also uh, leaving tiny little gaps, you know, inside or actually over the outline. As you can see, a little gaps in between the tiny shapes of this doorway there. So it gives a sense of liveliness to, to the door and the frame there. Yeah adding a bit of um, darker tone of green for these little trees on the left. And same for this tree, I'm using these choppy brush strokes of viridian green, mix in maybe a little bit burnt sienna to make the green even darker. Yeah, so during daytime, most of the, uh, the shaded areas in foliages is around the bottom to the middle. Okay, yeah, in most cases, adding a bit of um, contrast for those trees in the back of the houses as well. Yeah, so we can just make the tone of the green even darker by mixing in a bit more burnt sienna or brown. Yeah, just adding a bit of like kind of grayish brown for the rooftop area, not too dark because the sunshine is really bright. And using these small dotting brush strokes to show the brick texture on the exterior of these houses. Just doing it very loosely. Yeah, and this color is raw umber especially making the, the little dots a little bit more crisp, closer to the foreground. So these houses on the right are uh, closer to me. Adding a bit more purple for the doorway there. And reading green for the tree, extending all the way outside the picture frame here. Yeah, reading green in certain parts to show a bit of three dimension for the tree or bush and just putting in punching in the colors for these buildings in the distance mostly uh, browns red browns raw umber colors yeah so now i'm getting ready to uh, paint the foliages on the very left so to make trees or bushes look even more three-dimensional. It's really important to paint at least two layers of very different green tones. So here I'm applying this dark tone of green, very thin green, mixed within a bit of burnt sienna. As you can see, I'm just using the residue of the green as I'm moving uh, to the middle of the tree because the shade is not that strong around the middle part of the trees. Yeah, usually the bottom 
is a strongish. They're adding some more even darker green tones around the lower part, loosely. Just choppy brush strokes. Yeah, and this painting process is so satisfying, adding the second layer for these foliages. Same for here, the contrast is coming. In order to show a sunny day, we can't just use bright colors. We have to be brave adding in these uh, contrasting or darker tones to show the brightness of a sunny day. Yeah, contrast is very important to show brightness. And adding some accentuation yeah, to show three dimension using leftover grays in between the houses. Little cast shadows from each little section. Underneath the eaves, just leftover gray. Yeah, and lastly, I'm adding uh, this uh, Viridian Green mixed with Burnt Sienna to paint the tall grass in the foreground. I think that needs some more weight for the bottom right side of this sketch. Yeah, and it really adds more balance. It's using these relaxing uh, brush strokes using the tip of my brush. Finally, I'm using the leftover gray, the, the trio of colors, blue, green, and magenta to paint these cars. Mostly these are black or these are black or grays, leaving little streaks in the middle to show the shine. And using vibrant red for, for the lights. So they stand out better. Attention points. And here is the finished sketch. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update this channel two to three times a week. And enjoy the beautiful season of autumn, everyone. I will see you again very soon next time. Have a great day.